Hi everyone, this is uh, Pierre-Alexandre Ballon from uh, Utrecht University and uh, MIT. And today, what we're going to do in our uh, network analysis uh, training session, we're going to learn how to create an iGraph object. So this is very important because uh, most of your work when you do a network analysis project is about getting the data right, doing some data cleaning, do doing some data reorganization. And then once your data is clean, what you do is you create an object, uh, in this case, an iGraph object uh, that will you be able to, able to analyze uh, using some specific network analysis softwares. And once your object is created, once the iGraph object is created, uh, then uh, the analysis can start and it becomes uh, very easy. So today what we're going to look at is really, really critical. So again, I assume that um, you have uh, the, pa the package iGraph already installed in your computer uh, to follow this uh, today's lecture. If you don't have it, then follow this link and uh, install it. So first step, let's load uh, our iGraph package. So we're gonna load iGraph, which will uh, give us access to some kind of uh, function that will allow us to perform network analysis. So now we have iGraph uh, already loaded. And the very first step is actually to load uh, some network data. So in this case, I'm going to load an edge list. And uh, this basically, this is a small network that indicates whether two characters uh, appear together, together in a scene of uh, Les Miserables, which is uh, the novel by Victor Hugo. So what you can do is just use the function called read CSV to create an object called EL that stands for edge list. And in between the parentheses, your main argument is basically this link uh, to the data set. So you just run it. Let's explore a little bit to see how our data is structured. Basically, you have character one, in this case, for instance, Gilles Normand. Uh, character 2, Jean Valjean, who is like the main protagonist of uh, Les Miserables. And you have a weight of interaction indicating basically in how many scenes these two characters uh, co occur. So it's a very simple type of edge list uh, structure that we have. And that's like the first uh, object that we need to create an iGraph object. Now, the second one that we're going to load is a form of node list. So let's call it um, NL. And we're going to have access to attributes of this uh, character. So again, follow this link and you'll be able to load a node list. All right. So you see character one and then there is a vector of, in this case, size. You could have belonging to specific group, whatever kind of attribute is relevant for your network analysis. Right. So um, we need these two different types of um, of uh, of data to create an iGraph object. Now, once you have an edge list and a node list indicating characteristic of nodes, what you want to do is to create. That's the, the the key part of the of this uh, tutorial. We're going to create an object called G, which will be our iGraph object. That's what I call an iGraph object. And once you have this iGraph object created, the network analysis actually becomes very easy. So this is really the critical point to get this G object right. So I'm going to create an object called G, which is my iGraph object. And I'm going to use the function graph, graph from data frame from uh, my uh, iGraph package. OK, this is the name of the function. And then uh, as argument, I will indicate that this is my edge list. OK, and these are my vertices, so these are my nodes. So I'm going to use the argument vertices equal equal NL, right? NL is my node list here. EL is basically my edge list that you find here. And I will indicate that my network is not directed because whenever two uh, characters appear in the same scene, uh, it doesn't really matter if um, there is no there is a perfect reciprocity, you know, A and B co-occur. Uh, is the same, the, the, the link between A and B is the same as the link between B and A. So basically my network in this case is undirected. So let's go ahead and, and uh, read this function. 
well, it looks like we did a good job because the G object is now uh, loaded in this case. And uh, if we explore the G object, that's what we find. So basically, uh, the the n here means that we have we have a graph, you know, and we have some kind of weight. Uh, we have uh, the the number of nodes, which is seventy seven here. We have uh, the number of edges, which is five or eight in this case, and uh, we have some kind of attributes like name, like size, and like weight. So we have the size of the nodes. We have the weight of the of the edges here. Okay. And uh, there is a little bit of an example of uh, the type of uh, links that you have. So we find again Gilles Normand and Jean Valjean uh, here. So this is really, really, really powerful because now that we have this um, G object created, we can do network analysis. So for instance, I care about the degree of, uh, of, of this network. I want to know who is the most central in the network. Well, what I can do is perform this function uh, I use the function called degree, and then I get basically the degree of every node. So I know that Gilles Normand has like 14 connections, Zephine has 14, and then we have someone like Marus, you know, 38. That's um, how we're going to perform the analysis. So we get the degree distribution here. Um, now, if you want to access to characteristics of the graph, VG for instance, that will give you uh, the distribution of all the nodes in this uh, uh, in this network. If you want to access, and that's going to be useful for data visualization, if you want to access uh, a specific attribute, in this case, we want to, for instance, access the vector of size, then that's how you, you do it. And you get the distribution of size of the network. Okay, so this is how it works. So for instance, you could use this argument uh, in a function where you perform uh, network visualization and you want to use uh, information on the size, for instance, to represent different types of size of nodes in the network. Uh, if you want to access all, basically all kind of uh, information, you want to know every information we have uh, when it comes to uh, the different attributes of our nodes or vertices, what you do is you do vertex attributes here g and then you will know you know basically we have information about the name that's how you access the name vector information about the size is how you access the size vector and so on now you can do the same for edges because you might want to color the edges or stuff like this in the future so to access the edges here that's how you do it you see we have 508 edges and we can access of course the edge weight in a similar way. So if I do AG and then, you know, weight, then I get my distribution of weight for each edges, you know, because some are stronger than others. Um, and if I want to have information about all, uh, all type of attributes of edges in this case, what I do is exactly the same as uh, I was doing for nodes, and I'm gonna use edge attributes and G, and then you get the full distribution of the information we have about the edges themselves. So in this case, we only have weights, okay? So that's how you get information about that. Uh, now, finally, you can have a look at your uh, graph, but represented as an edge SNC matrices, matrix using this formula here. And then what you get is basically uh, a representation of uh, sparse matrix, okay? So that's how you represent your network. Now, the very last step in this video, uh, we're gonna learn later how to compute uh, different type of network matrix, and we're gonna learn later how to visualize this uh, network in a, in a really uh, beautiful way. But to start with, if you, you just have like this little command that you can use, which is plot, and if you use plot and the argument in the function would be g, which is the name of the network, then what you get is already a visualization of this network, which is already interesting. So without any kind of trimming, you know, any kind of further analysis, I already get uh, a network visualization uh, of my uh, interactions between different characters of Les Miserables. So you see really in the center, Jean Valjean is there, you know, and then you see like this, um, 
uh, there's a like, little cluster here, a little cluster here with Napoleon and other people. You see already uh, some, some people like the bishop here being like really in a very interesting position, you know, like bridging one group here and another group here. See some actors being more peripheral, like Jondrette, like Grévier, a bit peripheral, Sister Perpetue, um, and then some very central actors. So only with one function, you can already perform this type of uh, network visualization. So as I said, this, uh, this tutorial today is very useful to basically go from uh, this type of uh, data representation, which is at list and not list, create an iGraph object. And once you have this iGraph object, as you see G, then you can perform a lot of analysis like network visualization or computing a different type of, uh, of indicator, network indicator. All right, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I see you next time.